Hey, everybody. So in keeping with trying to give you guys good information and interesting interviews, I'm bringing to you today my best friend. His name is Dave Bremer, and Dave is the owner of Flood Relief, Inc. Dave's been my best friend for 37 years. And um, back when I got out of the Marine Corps, I actually worked with Dave. Um, so Dave is an emergency services guy. He handles, you know, floods in the home, fire and smoke damage. And he's also doing um, coronavirus cleanup right now. So, I mean, how, how this is just perfect timing to be able to do an interview with him and introduce you to my friend, Dave. So don't click stop yet. Enjoy this interview with Dave Bremer. I'm here with um, a really special guest. I know that uh, I always say that, but uh, the gentleman that I'm with right now, this is my friend, Dave Bremer. Dave, say hi to everybody. Hey guys. So um, I wanted to, to bring you Dave because first of all, let me give you a little background. Dave and I have been, best friends for like 37 years. Uh, I met Dave when I was 23. Um, he was there for, you know, the birth of my son. When I moved to Florida, he moved out there. We've j we're just the best of friends. And a little background between us is that um, Dave gave me my first start in business. Um, after I got out of the Marine Corps, uh, Dave uh, said, hey, how'd you like to be in business for yourself, making decent money? And uh, we started cleaning carpets back when I was uh, 23 years old. And, um, and so I worked with Dave for a while. And I only bring that up because, um, at a, you know, I've known <laughs> thousands of people in my career. I've managed hundreds, if not thousands of people. And I've never met anyone that works quite as hard as this guy does. Um, Dave's in the emergency services business. But he's doing something right now that I think is really appropriate for our times, which is he's doing uh, virus de uh, decontamination. Um, and, you know, I think this is going to be especially helpful for people that might have gotten the virus and they need their home decontaminated before they come back or companies that are, you know, soon we're hopefully we're going to be going back to work again. So I wanted to invite Dave uh, and do an interview with him and talk a little bit uh, about uh, what he's doing right now. So Dave, first of all, um, why don't you tell everybody, you know, how long you've been in the, the, the emergency services business and, uh, and how you wound up getting into the, the virus de de decontamination uh, business. Okay, sure. Um, I have been in the business for over 38 years, more than half my life, I have to add. So 1981, I got started doing um, flood work, which is uh, water damage, going into homes and businesses and drying them out. And then uh, through that, I was able to learn a lot about mold, uh, bacteria, viruses, uh, things that are in water or that are in uh, places that we inhabit, like our offices and whatnot. And I learned a lot about that and how to treat them and how to clean them and how to get them tested. And you had to go to school for that too, right? And get certified. I oh, happen to absolutely. know that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It was, uh, you know, it's a science. So there's a lot to learn about how to do it. And it's, it's touchy. You got to think. You got to know. It's it's not a cookie cutter. Such every job is different. Sure. So that's where uh, you know that's where my skill lies in going in and cleaning. Uh, my mission is to clean the area as if it were a surgical center or an operating room. And that's what I've been taught to do, and I'm certified in doing it and licensed to do it as well. All right, so we, I know, um, and I'll bring it up that, for instance, you know, when you uh, do a, or you come across a, a flood or, or, or something, uh, you know, a place has been flooded out, you, not only do you have to extract all the water and, and make sure that, you know, all the walls don't have any sort of water left over because that causes mold, um, 
But also when you do mold remediation, you actually have a company that comes in to test for any spores. So if it's not, it's, if it's not completely clean of all of the uh, contaminants, then you would have failed at your job, right? Well, look at it this way, Bear. If you've got a home and let's say there's little kids living in the home or somebody's mother or grandmother that is immune compromised, somebody that's on cancer medication or whatnot, you can't have mold spores in there. It'll kill them. Right. But as far as children go, they're more susceptible because their immune systems have not developed completely. So, yes, it's part of our standard protocol, what we would do after doing a mold remediation or a bacterial cleaning or a virus cleaning is we'll come in and have a screening done by a hygienic company that would come in and they take pictures, they take uh, time readings, chain of custody, they take samples. It could be air samples, for example, in the case of a mold. They'll take air samples and send them into a lab and get them uh, tested and get the results all printed out in a nice stack of documents that uh, is called a clearance test. And that clearance test uh, proves uh, to anybody that may want to buy your home in the future, they may say, hey, I see here you had a huge water damage, you had mold situation going on, that's what your insurance company says, that you had a claim. Uh, do you have any documentation to prove that I'm not moving into a do-it-yourself or situation here where we could be at risk, my, my family and myself? Sure. So, so Dave, I, I know that you got started uh, doing uh, the virus de decontamination prior to the coronavirus, which, you know, um, how... A, uh, appropriate these during these times that you have that skill set. How how did you get into that? What what was it that that led you that? Because we, as we know, I mean, a couple of years ago, that was nobody thought of that. So how did you get into it? What happened? Yeah, cleaning viruses is the same as cleaning uh, any kind of a bacterial contamination. Uh, let's take for example a toilet overflow. We've done plenty of toilet overflows. A lot of them upstairs, downstairs, came through the ceiling, came down into the kitchen and had to tear the cabinets out and clean everything and disinfect everything and decontaminate. Under a containment, which means we plastic off the entire area and go in there in our space suits, so to speak, in our hazmat virus suit, and we go in there and we clean everything. And that's for our, our own protection. Uh, and then uh, we would have the hygienist or the, uh, um, the company that comes out to do the clearance test. Um, environmental company is what they call them. And we would have them come out and do the testing and give the homeowner or the business owner uh, a clearance test, which is a stack of documents, certified government papers, uh, everything that uh, proves that that home or that living space, that area is cleaner than it is if you walked outside and walked around for five minutes and came back in the house, you're coming into a cleaner environment. Sure. So but I, I think that where I, where I was getting with the question is that I happen to know this because you told me, but um, you know, you've had some houses where you've gone into and they just could not get the smell of, uh, of you know, either dogs or maybe they had smokers that, that used to live in the house and realtors, yes. you know, could not, there was no cleaning crew that could get the places as clean as they needed it to be to be able to sell the house. So that's where you picked up the technology to come in and attack those odors just like they were a, a virus, right? So you, you, you acquire these machines that will actually go in there and they will completely destroy any foreign entities, including viruses, um, that will leave not a place, not, not just clean looking, but also you know, it smells as, as fresh as daisies, right? I mean, that's kind of what you explained to me, right? 
Okay, uh, long story short, yes, we were hired by a, a client that we did a lot of water damages for, and he approached us and asked us about a home, a 5,000 square foot home that he managed. He was a property manager, and that home was, they were trying to rent it. The problem is the previous tenants had turned it into a gambling casino, and they went in there, and when the police had busted the place and arrested everybody, uh, a pack out company came in to clean everything out and pack it out. And there was cigarettes in every ashtray overflowing. There was a hookah lounge in one of the rooms. There were cigars everywhere and they could not get the smoke out of the house. They tried painting walls. They tried replacing carpets and they still couldn't get the smell out of that room. And we told them, we'll take it out, guarantee you. We'll take it out in four days. So we went in there and set up ozone machines that we owned. And how I learned about getting rid of odors is from taking smoke and odor classes from fires. And uh, we've used it to, uh, if you look it up online, uh, Wikipedia or whatever, it'll tell you that ozone will kill viruses, 99.9% .9 of all viruses, including coronavirus. Gotcha. And there are different coronaviruses, so gotcha. virus 19 is included in that. So we're a little bit different in that we come in with an ozone machine, which is a gas. You have to vacate the house for, depending on the size, could be a couple of days. Uh, we will set up an ozone machine inside, uh, the home, we will close it up and lock it up. No one's allowed in while it's in there uh, and, and operating. And then after a time, we go in there and we turn off the machines and air, blow out, air out the house. And it's fresh as daisies. Right. Well, yeah. you, what, one of the things that I, you, you said to me that I think is uh, also interesting is that you know, in China, they're attacking these, the, the virus are going there cleaning common areas which, with something that is effectively a, a type of a chlorine, which leaves a residue, which could be dangerous to your health. But the way that you do it, there is no residue. That's right? Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, that's the difference between what we do is there's no residue. Because it is a gas, it's not going to leave a sticky film on all your contents. And, you know, tabletops, sink tops, or you don't have to go in and wipe everything down after. Uh, and it effectively kills any odor causing element. All it is really is oxygen with an extra oxygen molecule added to it. Believe gotcha. it or not. However, uh, you know, a, a lot of these companies are going in there and they're fogging with a chemical and that chemical will leave the residue and then afterwards it may kill the virus, but now afterward you got a huge, like say your library back there, for example, you'd have to clean every single book. You'd have to, <laughs> a huge, a huge undertaking. Yeah, I'm glad, yeah, yeah. does everybody like my library, by the way? <laughs> This is a virtual library, but I always get compliments on it. Well, folks, listen, Dave is, um, I, I, you know, just to say that he's my best friend isn't strong enough. I mean, he's, you know, the guy is like my brother. I mean, he's, he is my brother. I, I, I'm, I'm cl as close to him as I am any family members, if not more so. I trust him implicitly. You know, he's always had an open door, uh, a, a key to my door, known how to get in. I, I would absolutely 100% endorse Dave to any of you guys that need any kind of emergency services. And I would encourage you to think about using him when we're, ta we're talking about, you know, the, the health and safety of you, your family, and your employees as you start heading back uh, to work. So I'm going to put Dave's information down at the bottom of this video. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know very many people that are as crazy about, you know, answering their phone as quickly as I am, but Dave happens to be one of them. You know, he, I, I've, I'm not kidding. On Christmas Eve one night, 
Dave got up at 1030 at night while we were in the middle of celebrating and rushed to go do a flood on Christmas Eve. So we are talking about the real deal. At, at the expense of being scorned by his wife and his family, Dave will make you and your family a priority. So Dave, thanks you so much for uh, doing this interview with me. Folks, I'm going to put Dave's info down there. And um, please, I encourage you. Uh, if you're not going to call him right now, write his name and number down somewhere because at some point, um, I hope you don't need him, but I think you will. Okay. So, Dave, thanks again, brother. And uh, thank you. We what will uh, think? We walk on water. There you go. Wow. Walk on water. <laughs> wow. We walk on water. Yeah. Mm -hmm.